Are you selling your home for the first time, or maybe it's been a few years since you last sold your home? Things have changed a bit since the last time you sold it. Let's start with the basics on getting you started with home staging in this week's podcast episode. Hi, it's Kasha McDaniel, and I am a home stager decorator, and you're listening to the Creative Home Podcast, where I talk about staging and decorating and all things associated with your home. So take a listen. Pardon the interruption. Do you know that I now have an Etsy shop? Yes, it's called the Willow Brook Printable, and there you'll find digital art prints that you can purchase, download, and print to hang in your home. Take advantage of all the places I got to visit when we lived in Europe. I have pictures of the Tower Bridge in London, the beautiful architecture in Amsterdam, Charles Bridge in Prague, and many more to come. Willow Brook Printable is where you can find these wall art prints so you can decorate your living room, dining room, bedroom, or other spaces. Now you don't have an excuse for those empty walls in your house. Download pictures of sunflowers or landmarks in Europe. Come check out Willow Brook Printable at etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Willow Brook Printable. Welcome back to another Creative Home Podcast. My name is Kasha and today we are talking about first timers staging a home. And that's who most of my clients are. Um, because they've never staged a home or have know a little bit about it, but are not quite sure what to do. And so if you are selling your home for the first time, or maybe you've lived in your home for maybe like seven to 10 years, some things have changed while others have not. So that's what I want to go through in this episode. The, I want to talk about the part of the has changed is that you do need to make some effort to get your house ready to sell. So whether you're young or old, you need to make a great first impression. You only have eight to 10 seconds to make a great first impression. So you want to make a count. When you decorate your home, it's to your own style. But when it comes time to sell, you have to decorate it to sell, not how you live in it. So there are some things you can leave out while other things need to be put away. So let's start with the first thing, and that is clutter. Now, you may not see the clutter because you probably lived with it. You kind of put blinders on. You're kind of like, oh, there's nothing wrong with that corner over there with the stack of paperwork or whatever is over there. It's like, "Mm, yeah, that's just distracting. So the first thing you need to think about is go room by room and remove the clutter in each of those spaces. Now, clutter really is no more than postponed decisions, meaning, and I got to quote that from Barbara Hemphill, that's what clutter is. It's basically, you don't know where its home is, you don't know where to put it, so you just kind of just stash it over here for right now until you can figure out what to do with it. Whether you throw it out, whether you actually find a space for it, or do something with it, maybe you need to hang it up, or, or whatever it is. You just haven't made a decision on where it needs to go. So it just starts to pile up. So those are the things I'm talking about where if they don't have a home, you now have to start deciding. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to throw it out? Are you going to donate it? Are you going to do something with it? Maybe we're going to pack it up because you want to keep it. Okay. So start going through room by room and remove the clutter. Um, I'm looking around my office and I have piles of paperwork just like everywhere on my desk, on the floor. I have an extra computer and monitor. And I'm just like, oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's clutter. That, that really is. Because if those had been removed, you know, start taking those, th- those types of things out of the room, you realize, oh wow, the room just got bigger just by taking those things out. Okay. And making a decision, putting it somewhere, recycling it, doing whatever it is you're going to do with it. Okay. So room by room, remove the clutter. Okay. And if you need a friend to help come on over and say, yeah, that's distracting. Yep. That's clutter. Cause sometimes people are like, oh, that's not clutter. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. Toys can be cluttered. I, they're clutter magnets. I swear <laughs> they like multiply. It seems like, right. Um, so yeah. So number one, remove the clutter. Number two, we kind of do- talked a little bit about this is pack up the ac- excess stuff. So maybe you really do need it. You just haven't found a home for it. Maybe it's just something that, you know, you're just wanting to have out, but 
you want to keep, but there's no space for it in that room, pack it up. You want to keep it, pack it up, put it away in a box, go get those boxes, go to Staples or wherever where you can get some empty boxes and start packing things up because you know what? you're moving. You might as well start now. Even if it's not until, like you're not going to put your house up on the market for like another month or two or maybe in the fall, start making those decisions now, okay? It will help you in the long run later on, okay? If you touch it, as soon as you touch it, you got to make a decision. What am I doing with this? So I don't want you going back now. Oh, I'm not touching anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying that. You need to start thinking you're moving, okay? You got to get into that moving mindset, and realize this stuff has all got to go, okay? This has to be moved, whether it's gonna be seen for the showing or it needs to look good or it needs to be put away, okay? So pack up any excess stuff, excess toys for your kids, for your pets, animals, whatever it may be. For you, maybe you have lots of weights and things like that that's just making a mess, okay? This, whatever it may be, pack up the excess stuff that you know you want to take, start a donation box and just start throwing things in there. My kids, when they start outgrowing clothes that fit no longer fit, they literally put it, and I know it's it's <laughs> it's as simple as, oh God, you let them do what? I tell them to put it outside their bedroom door and put it on the floor. So I know that's not laundry. That's something that they have tried on. It no longer fits and they want to donate it. That way they know they don't look through their closet going, well, I have all these clothes and they go, I have nothing to wear. And I'm like, but you have a whole closet full of clothes. And they're like, well, but nothing fits. I'm like, well, then pull it out. Okay. That's just one example. All right. So my kids do that. So when I see clothes outside their bedroom door on the floor, then I just start a trash bag and I know that that is going to be donated to Goodwill, Salvation Army, whoever, somebody, Right. And so I know I start collecting those things and that takes over time, right? So I put that bag, whether I have it either in there, you know, in that hallway or actually I put it probably in the laundry room is where I normally wanders off to. So that way when I know when I'm leaving and I know I'm going to be driving by a donation place that I have that bag already there that I can just just drop it off and it's ready to go and it's out of my house, right? It's as simple as something as simple as that, okay? So that's number two, pack up the excess stuff, right? And, you know, donate whatever you can. Number three, this is a big one because a lot of you may have a lot of this and some of you may have just a few. And I know there's not many kind of in the middle. But number three is remove family photos. Take them all down. Every single one. I know you're probably thinking, but, but, but I know, but they're moving with you. Okay. This is the tough love that I'm going to give you every time I talk to, you know, clients or you on my podcast, there is tough love. Yes. It's not like your kids are going away. All right. They're coming with you in those photographs. They're just being put away temporarily until you can see them again in your new home. All right. So remove all the family photos. No one needs to see what your kids look like because those photos are going to be online. Think of it that way. I personally do not post pictures of my kids on Facebook or any other social media type thing. No one needs to know, strangers especially, don't need to know what my kids look like. I'm prior military, so yes, I have that, not a phobia, but People don't need to know. My friends, they know what my kids look like. They've seen them. That's okay by me. No problem. But other people, they don't need to know. Same thing when it comes to your listing of your house and other strangers walking through your house. They don't need to know how many kids you have, what they look like, what you all look like. They, they really don't. And it's also as part of depersonalizing the space because the buyers, when they come in, they want to imagine themselves in the house. They don't want to see, oh, well, this family lives here. Uh, uh, Okay, that's how they do things. Okay, but you need to get that stigmatism out. You need them to feel as if they can move into the house. Okay, that they can picture themselves living in your home. And with pictures of other kids, people's kids looking at you or people. Yeah, that doesn't help. It really doesn't. So number three, remove those family photos. Okay, number four changes all these changes we're talking about are temporary they're only gonna last a month maybe two depending on the price point how quickly your house sells where it is you know all that stuff 
these changes are temporary. This is not a permanent thing. When, like I said, when you move into your next home, you're going to have all your stuff back. Okay. This is only temporary. And like I mentioned, we're decorating it to sell, not decorating to live in it. So it's going to feel kind of weird. Your favorite chair may not be in the right spot. Okay. Your favorite thing, whatever it may be, your memorabilia, your pictures of your kids um, are not going to be up. It's okay. It's only temporary. All right. So just think of it that way. It's only for a short time. You'll be fine. Okay. I promise you. And that way you can sell your house faster. Okay. And then the fifth thing that I'm going to mention is find a home stager to help you with selling your house. Okay. Maybe all you need is just the guidance of telling you what you need to do. Because like I said, if you've lived in your house for any period of time, you have the blinders on, you can't see that there's too much furniture in a room or it's too dark in the house because you like it dark. Well, guess what? We need to brighten up the space. We need to open the windows. We need to open the curtains and do everything to make it appeal. And I know you're probably thinking, but I don't live that way. And I'm like, I know, but that's what people want to see. Okay. I know we're decorating it to sell. Say it with me. We're decorating to sell. We're decorating it to sell, okay? Because then you can decorate it on how you want to live when you get to your new place, all right? So a home stager can do, all, you know, depending on which one you get, normally they can either just tell you what you need to do, help you move things around, um, or bring in furniture. You know, there's lots of different packages that they can offer to help you get your house sold. They have seen many houses on what works and what doesn't. They can give you advice on what to change. Maybe a wall color needs to change. Maybe we need to, you know, move things around a little bit, kind of open it up a bit, whatever it may be. Okay. A home stager can give you invaluable information that for your home that can help you sell your house. Okay. Repeat with me. We're decorating it to sell, right? We've said this already. So of those five things, those will get you started on getting your house ready to sell. All right. If you need more, I have a um, free staging starter kit and I will put the link in the show notes so that I can, you can take a look and see there's, um, it's bit.ly forward slash staging starter kit. And in there are more tips on what you can do to get your house started and getting it ready to sell. Um, before you maybe get a home stager come in there or, you know, someone else can give you some dec- you know, advice to tell you what you can do to get ready and look great for and fantastic for pictures. Because again, you have eight to 10 seconds to make a great first impression. If people don't like the photos that they see online, they're going to move on and they're not going to be impressed with what is on there. Okay. So you need to stand out. All right. I hope this gives you a great starting point. If you are the first time home stager, you know, staging your house for the first time, this is a chance to get you going in the right direction. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm at bluediamondstaginganddesign.com and you can check out my website and we can always do virtual things. If you don't live in North Carolina and you live a different state, that's perfectly fine. I can help you with, you know, a virtual staging thing consultation that way. Okay. All right. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I will talk to you later.